So you worked in New York City during Hurricane Sandy, and you shared some of those stories with me, and, and they're fascinating. And I think that fundamentally changes how you think about uh, architecture and disaster recovery. How, how are, you know, a lot of people are looking at the cloud, they're looking at different things. How are you thinking, you know, you have this new model in place, how are you doing disaster recovery for this? Sure. So I think with, with Sandy, I, you know, it really changed who I am. One thing that is very, very important is making a extremely cohesive disaster recovery. What does that mean? Making sure that you look at all the peripherals that inject into your EHR, your PACs, any business line that you want to do disaster recovery and highly available uh, solution, highly available solution. You want to make sure that you pull all the pieces that build that ecosystem. That's number one. Number two is make sure that it's auto failover. Once disaster happens, there is no time for people to pick up the call, their family. Um, in Sandy, people had their homes under, uh, underwater. So you can't ask 16 people to come meet you in some kind of data center or remotely get to your data center and do the steps that are required to move from one site to another. It needs to be seamless, it needs to be automated, and it needs to be orchestrated. Now, fast forward seven to 10 years, now the technology is in place where you can automate and orchestrate a lot of different things through RPA and other automation tools where you can say, if this doesn't work here, automatically move it here. So that is a true disaster recovery for technologists where it's a zero touch. Are, are we able to do, I, I know we can do that with some systems, but are we able to do that with the EHR yet? Or are we still, we're still working through a little bit of the, I don't know, the legacy aspect of the EHR at this point. Sure. So EHR by themselves are now built at, at HA. So they do have the integration of saying you can run it here or you can run it here. They have come a long way. Now, you have to decide all the peripherals around them. Even having Active Directory fully redundant across two data centers is very important. Your Active Directory doesn't work. Nobody can log into your EHR. So you have to do some due diligence on looking at different things. Some could be more than one and you can have a farm. The other one could, that does not work in farm, you can have one side, bring everything down and automate everything that I would do in a keyboard through an orchestration tool. And they do exist currently. So when you stood up your new environment, did you, did you essentially say, hey, we're just getting two of them, we're putting one here, one here? Is so that we got two and two. So now we have two in one place, completely highly available within the data center then we have two more highly available within the data center. So at any time we can mo move back and forth without any problems. And of course, it's, there's, there, there is some uh, currently intervention required for humans, but we are getting to a place where we completely automate. 